Welcome to the WP Builds Podcast, bringing you the latest news from the WordPress community. Now, welcome your hosts, David Wormsley and Nathan Wrigley. Hello there and welcome to the WP Builds Podcast. This is episode number 161, entitled, Why Don't You Believe in Us? It was published on Thursday, the 9th of January, 2020. My name's Nathan Wrigley, and I will be joined a little bit later by David Wormsley from davidwormsley.com so that we can have our discussion. If you listen to this podcast regularly, you'll know that we flip-flop alternate weeks. One week we do an interview, and one week we do a discussion with David Wormsley and I. So this week it's the discussion, and next week it'll be an interview with a plug-in theme or notable person in the WordPress space. Just a couple of things before we begin. Head over to wpbuilds.com forward slash subscribe. There you'll be able to find every single way that you can interact with WP Builds, be that joining our double newsletter. So there's two newsletters, one which will alert you to when we update the feed, so you get a new podcast episode or a new news episode. And there's another one just to let you know about WP deals that have come around. So as soon as I hear about a WordPress deal, I'll inform people on that list. Also, there's the Facebook group join over 2300 wordpressers talking about wordpress stuff and there's other things like our youtube channel and of course ways to subscribe to us on your favorite podcast player the other url i'd mention is wpbuilds.com forward slash deals it's a bit like black friday but every day of the week there's a whole bunch of coupon codes on that page and you can find those and uh, you know if you're in the market for a plugin or theme you never know there might be something over there and the other one I'm going to mention is wpbuilds.com forward slash advertise. If you are a plugin theme developer or have something in the WordPress space, you might like to put an ad on the WP Builds podcast to get your product or service in front of a WordPress specific audience, a bit like GoWP have done. GoWP is a white label WordPress maintenance company for agencies. With their pricing, it makes doing the maintenance yourself seem silly. One of their most popular features is the Visual Validator tool. It does visual checks on your site after plugin updates, so they know if something is broken immediately and can fix it before you or your client even notice. Do yourself a favour and check out GoWP at gowp.com. And we do thank all of our sponsors for helping to support the WP Builds podcast. Okie dokie, what have we got in store for you today? Well, the episode is called Why Don't You Believe in Us? It is yet another of our explorations into the watertight marketing book by Bryony Thomas. This, I think, is the seventh episode in a row, a discussion episode, that is. They're all listed in the show notes. And in this one, we're tackling the thorny issue of why should clients even trust that you can do what it is that you say that you do? You know, if they come to you as opposed to another agency, what proof do you offer that what you claim to do, you are able to do? So we talk about things like endorsements, testimonials, how you might get those, where you might put them, how you might repurpose them, how you solicit them and, and things like that. And it's a nice, nice episode. I hope you enjoy it. Hello, this discussion, we're calling Why Don't You Believe in Us? And it's another discussion that is based on the book Watertight Marketing by Bryony Thomas, where she discusses 13 leaks where our businesses can lose potential customers or clients. So through these discussions, this series, we've been working up an imaginary tunnel starting at the narrowest point at the bottom, which is where our existing customers and working up customers are and working up to the top where there are people who don't know us so we've already discussed a few things so we started with forgotten customers they're the people we may have neglected we've talked about onboarding where we think we might have the clients on board but they're not yet committed not having an emotional gateway not having brand identity that customers can relate to not having a gateway no trial or a product ladder to our big offering, no critical approval. That's countering the third party objections. And now we're moving on to no proof. 
So, this one, I think it's going to be a fairly short one, don't you think, Nathan? Yeah, largely because neither of us, when we did our little preamble chat before we pressed record, it would appear that this is something that we're both quite bad at. So, you know, <laughs> there's a lot to talk about, but we just don't come from a point of experience. So, I suspect during this episode, we'll, we'll be there'll be a lot of guesswork, a lot of kind of thinking, why didn't I ever do that? I don't do that. I don't like doing that. That feels wrong and all of those kind of things. But certainly lots to talk about by the way this Bryony Thomas book do you know how 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 old is it is it a sort of fairly recent publication or is it going back a decade or more do you know um, I think it's 2014 but okay. don't quote me on that no yeah so it's it, yeah it's it's a bit old now but uh, I think this I think what I like about the book is it's quite practical it gives you this kind of framework and I think it's ageless really because mm. she's not really getting into the sort of digital side of things mm. but there is actually something we should mention because there are factors we leave out with just taking these topics that this funnel that we're working up does have kind of different levels and we on this discussion, are talking, I guess, at the point where people on their journey to buy something are starting to get critical rather than it's not an emotional judgment. They're starting to get into that thing where they, they need some evidence to make that purchase. So right. this is the start of that. So, yeah, no proof is very much about um, just showing that we – we we literally are the real deal rather mm. than just our general marketing. It's when people are starting to look at us and say, well, are you really that? You know? Yeah, I suppose if you're a bricks and mortar shop and you're selling, I don't know, I keep using the analogy of shoes or something, just by yeah. by dint of the fact that you exist, you mm. are a shoe shop, you sell shoes, you don't really need to prove yeah. anything else. I mean, you know, you probably need to work hard on your customer service and all of those kind of things, but there you are. Whereas we sell something which is far more ephemeral. You can't really grab hold of it. You certainly can't sort of see it in a shop. So we have to go to, well, we have to try to go to different lengths, try different different techniques in order to uh, generate, I suppose, confidence that we are, we're actually capable of doing what it is that we claim yeah. to do. And also the fact that from a technical point of view, it is quite tricky. You know, if you want to put a website together, sure enough, you can go with a, you know, a quick and easy paid solution like Squarespace or whatever, and that will function. But we're, we're proposing, I presume, that we can do something slightly better, slightly different. And there's a lot of moving parts and so we have to to build up that trust. I, lots and lots of times I've had chats with clients who literally have asked the question, are you able to do this? In other words, they're actually saying, technically, can you do it? I know mm. it's possible, but can you do it? Uh, so, yeah, ah. definitely important. That's interesting. Also, you just raised a point which is really in the book. She... Uh, really highlights that this is for those major purchases where people do have to process and over time the, their decisions. So she talks about the fact that it's not it's not applicable in cases where she bought a handbag. She says the yeah. other day there yeah. was no no thought went into it. It was in her cost. She saw it. She liked it. She bought it. There was no decision making needed to be there. So it is really for people like us who it is quiet. They have to go through a process to get to the point of saying, yes, I'm going to let you build my website. Yeah, not just from mm. the point of view of the fact that it's a lot of money. You know, I mean, we all charge different amounts, I'm sure. But at the, the end of the day, it's not the cost of a pair of shoes to build a website. It's going to be more could be considerably more and also the fact that at some point during your process you'll have made them aware that there's actually a lot of a lot of work that they need to do to prepare for this it's not like can you please build me a website I'll come back in five weeks and you'll have finished it won't you you know they've got to yeah. have some skin in the game they've got to understand um, how their business works what it is that they want to be getting from the website and all of that kind of stuff so it's there's a lot going on um, and so you know, they're going to probably shop around and you've got to be able to justify your existence, uh, your proposal, whatever it is, your contract against the rivals um, who are going to be up against you. Mm, yeah. And I think, well, a, a lot of what's talked about by her is about getting endorsements from people because mm. I think she says something in the book uh, along the lines that you know you might have the greatest salesman or whatever if you're going to say about your product no one really is going to believe you because you know it's always going to be better if it's going to be a third party endorsement um, that's going to help to sway people um, 
So uh, her aim, I mean, it's a very simple topic we're discussing here. We do need to get endorsements from other people. We do need to show perhaps on our websites and in other places that we prove the things that we claim, you know, so Mm -hmm. we need to highlight those with things like, um, so testimonials are obviously our endorsements. And for a lot of us, a portfolio is the way that we prove that we've done the work. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you only have to look at uh, the amount of WordPress themes that come pre-installed with the portfolio post type <clears> to uh, to realize that this is quite a crucial thing in many business areas, not just in web design, in, in just about everything. You know, you want to be able to show all the stuff that you've done. And, you know, like I said, many, many themes come pre-installed with this in it. Uh, and yeah. no, no doubt most of us then unpick that and try to get rid of it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, the... The the test the whole testimonial thing is interesting because I've spoken about this a lot before. For me, the best testimonials are the people in real life. So the word of mouth, the actual people meeting um, over you know a social event or um, I don't know at some kind of networking meeting where face to face they describe. Oh well, I I used uh, David Wormsley. You know he was great. It was a really good service. That stuff I think comes at the top of the tree. I I, I find it hard to think that anything could beat that, but. If your business is more national or international than mine is, because mine's very much a local business, and so that that stuff can happen fairly meaningfully and have a, have a good result. But if you're um, if you're more national or international, you've got to try something different because the chances of your your potential clients actually in the real world meeting your previous clients is, is vanishing to say the least. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the testimonials thing. I have tried this. I tried it. I was saying to you earlier, I think probably five years ago, I just decided that I needed actual testimonials, not just... And what I mean by that is little quotes um, to go on the website that were written by people who'd worked with me before. So I very, I, I'm quite courageously for me, because I don't normally like doing this kind of thing, but I, I just penned an email which essentially said, you know, you've worked with us in the past. I'm wondering if you've got five minutes out of your day to write me maybe three lines about how you think the service went and so on and so forth. Um, Kept it short because, let's be honest, if you're going to do a testimonial, I think in most cases it's not going to be much more than a a few sentences. Nobody's going to sit down and pore over it. I was really surprised, Mm. I would say, that at that time maybe half of the people that I was working with got back to me and I picked the ones that seemed to fit best with the messaging that I wanted to put across. So that was really mm. effective, you know, by making it very quick and three lines only that, you know, if I'd left it open ended and said, can you just write me a testimonial, anything you like, um, maybe I would have had worse results, but I kept it short and um, and it was great. And I was able to use those. No idea if they made any impact. My guess is because I am local and in mm. my community, it's not that much of a stretch to think that somebody could know the person that appears on my website giving a testimonial it might have done because let's say for example yeah. john smith is on my website because i built his car garage a web you know a, a website for his car auto trading um garage um the chances are that many people will actually know him from where i come from and so seeing him on the website might just work but you know i don't know how trustful i would be going onto a website and looking at a testimonial from somebody that I've never heard of in a place that I've never been. Yeah, exactly. I think if you're, you've got a local audience, then you've just got to do that. I, I've held off from asking people because I, I, I just don't know what I do with them because I, I don't believe most testimonials myself. Mm. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not going to connect. Uh, I mean, it might help a little bit because a lot of my clients came from the area I grew up and, and perhaps that that might be it. In fact, I should do it. Yeah, I, mean, do I, it. Can't see the, I can't see the objection, especially if, like we've just been discussing, the, the people might actually know each other in the real world. I think that has a real, a real potential of having an impact. <clears throat> but I'm, I'm exactly like you. It, it, I, I hadn't really made the decision that I was distrustful of testimonials, more that I just completely ignore them. I just don't read them. And and they're always presented in a very similar fashion, aren't they? And I confess, I've you know done exactly the same thing. You know, there's a picture often in a you know uh, masked to be a circle of somebody's face, and then it yeah. says the person's yeah. name. This is John Smith, and 
He works for X company and here's what he has to say. And usually there's quotes at the beginning and quotes at the end, or it might even be in a, I don't know, it might even be in a speech bubble itself and all of this kind of stuff. And I just see that and immediately yeah. think, okay, it's a testimonial, move on. I don't know that person. <laughs> there's no reason for me to gain trust from that. But also, this is maybe getting a bit cynical. I've no real confidence that that testimonial is legitimate, real. Yes, could yes. be completely <laughs> written by the people running the website. Yes. Uh, and um, the one I, I, I talked to you about this earlier, the one that made me smile the most was one of the GPL clubs out there. Yeah. So if yeah. anybody doesn't know what they are, they're basically selling on uh, premium plugins. And um, so the developers are not getting anything. And they've got these nice little icons. They haven't got testimonials as such, but there's the icons that... Uh, I don't know, featured in yes. these places, and they were yeah, they were WP sort of blogs, well known blogs, and of course they were featured. They didn't link to it, of course, but they were featured saying "keep away from GPL clubs," you know. <laughs> so I, 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 it just made me smile so much. They just kind of turned it on their head, you know. Yeah, that's really <laughs> interesting. The um, I've I've noticed that actually quite a lot. That seems to be a bit of a, a trend that you know you go yeah. to a website. And you'll notice sort of halfway down on the home page. I mean, I think by by this point, I'm probably already beginning to suspect because the website sort of somehow looks a bit weird. And then you get to this usually a um a, you know a horizontal row of icons mm. from major blue chip companies. You know, like it's McDonald's and Coca Cola and uh, Dyson or whatever it might be. And and the the implication is absolutely that we have worked with these people. But when you actually inspect it, it's just somehow they've managed to force it onto the website in a way that basically yeah. says we could work for these people because we'd fit right in with them. But they're sort of trying to persuade me that they have already, which I, I've seen that so many times recently. And I find that a bit off-putting. In fact, that would have exactly the opposite effect on me. But maybe people who are just scanning through it creates some sort of i don't know psychological reassurance that oh look look, look at those logos i recognize those and they just move on without giving it any more thought sadly i think it does work but yeah we can i mean it's it's often with partnered with and you know That's i think it, you know yeah, i could use, probably with, yeah. I, I, yeah, and I could use uh, McDonald's because me and my wife talked about working while we was having a burger one day, you know. There you go. You worked <laughs> you know. in McDonald's yeah. once. You uh, borrowed their shared, used their shared Wi-Fi and bought a burger and sat down <laughs> and did some work. So, yeah, stick it on there. No, but I think I think all of that stuff, that, that kind of thing doesn't really work for me. I mean, maybe, maybe if I came across... So let's say, for example, you and I, obviously, we work in the in the WordPress world quite a lot. And there are a few characters who pop up in the WordPress um, world. And, you know, and, and you've decided over a period of time that they're to be trusted. They put out good content and you like what they say. Uh, if I saw them, I, I, I'm kind of regarding them a little bit more like my friend, you know. Um, so their their endorsement might work well on me. I can think of a few people in the WordPress space where if I see that they've used the plugin that I'm thinking of buying and they are credible and it really does sound like mm. they've used it and it's not just some sort of copy that um, has been, you know, just made up very quickly, I, I suppose it does work. So although I am cynical, I think I'm cynical to a point. If I know people and trust people, that it does have an impact. Certainly, I would say there's no need not to do it i can't think of a reason why you wouldn't put testimonials on i just think you've got to be be careful who you put the you know who the testimonials come from yeah can i just ask you did um when you got your testimonials in and put them on the site mm. when their name was mentioned did you also link to the website yeah that you built i did for them? yeah that's exactly what i did i um yeah. i put it so it was a portfolio of websites so the, the, it's now long since gone this this doesn't exist anymore but the the way it worked was you there was a testimonials item in the um in the main menu you would click on that mm. and then it would show um the the company's branding you know like the logo and then you could click in that and then it would give you like the brief and i would explain what the project was for and then i i would write about six lines and then i would put something like the outcome can't remember how i worded it and and what we did, and then I would mm. put the quote 
of the person next to it all so that it all sort of tied together with with pictures of what the website looked like yeah 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 i i mean i thought about this and how we might go about the other side the sort of um presenting our work and it's going to vary isn't it depending on what we focus on Mm -hmm. i think so if you're more of a designer and you're going to attract people because you do very attractive work then your portfolio is going to help you and i don't have one because (laughs) because i'm largely accommodating what clients want um it's not necessarily an aesthetic that i might like so that puts me off putting a portfolio on my site i've got nothing i'm terrible so designers can do that i think um of course clients maybe can wreck their designs later but Mm. i guess they can always put something in that shows what it looked like but i mean if you're a developer i guess you've got to show examples of things like you said can you actually do it you've got to show examples of where you've created a certain functionality so if somebody comes to you and say i want a real estate site um you know you can easily show them well i've done one it's here Yeah, I think that's important. Um, For me, that kind of process could be in the real world, if you know what I mean. If they came back with the query of, um, you know, can can you build a real estate site? I think I'd probably either say, well, I'll go away and think about it because I've never done it before. Or I would say, yeah, of course, and, and here is one that I've done before. So the testimonial is kind of working in the real world, if you know what I mean. I'm showing them something I've built before. And I know there's this kind of like ongoing debate about whether or not you should put your company's name in the footer of the website. And I think the debate is over in terms of whether it should be linked. So I think Google have made it quite clear that don't put a link. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. but I'm not sure what it means to have your just your name in the footer of the website you know so for example you know davidwormsley.com or whatever in the footer uh, but no links whatsoever Uh, then i suppose at least you can show that um look that was me it really was me because what would be stopping me from finding a superb example of uh, a real estate website and just going oh yeah yeah we we built that i mean obviously i'd be fingers crossed that they didn't Mm. actually phone them up and uh and check uh, which they'd be well within their rights to do, but you know that that can at least overcome that slight problem. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm. I think I'm swaying a little bit more towards the idea of putting the name in the footer if clients will allow it. You yeah. know, I oh, haven't, yeah. haven't yeah. done it. Yeah, yeah. no. I, I, th- I think I think there's a. I think that's probably the only reason I can think of that it might have some use. I think apart from that, it probably doesn't serve any purpose. Um, I actually have had clients before who have phoned up other clients. They've asked for their telephone numbers. Um, I don't know how those conversations went because in some cases I, I won the contract and never asked. And in other cases, I never heard back from them again. So, you know, it may, may have gone exactly the opposite way. But um, it has it has happened. You just remind me all the time of uh, some of the benefits of just, you know, uh, working in a certain community, you know, mm. uh, that you're going to see a lot more. I imagine you're going to see more of that than you would do internationally. But uh, yeah, yeah. And it works in my favor, I think. But it, I can imagine that, you know, if you've got aspirations to grow huge, it's um, yeah. my model is hopeless. You know, it's never going to allow me to be enormous, but it allows me to allows me to lead the life that I wish to lead and, and you know and, and it works for me but yeah uh, anyway so yeah testimonials I, I believe are probably worth using but I think they probably have more impact what about things like you know video testimonials the, these to me smack so much of kind of JV zoo stuff or you know like <laughs> landing pages that go on and on and on and on and you see these videos of people who are raving about the product this on a personal level, this just doesn't sit well with me. I, I don't like that too much. Yeah, me too, because it seems, I don't know. You rather, I, I've seen it on some products where you can almost tell that the person who provided the service has held that uh, client to hostage to do it. Mm. So it's been at the end of a build and they've stuck the camera in front of them and say, say nice things about me while I'm standing here. You can feel it. Um, And then I also feel that it doesn't seem that genuine, does it? It's quite a big ask for most people to say, will you stick yourself on camera and, and give me a testimonial? So, I don't know. I just find I don't believe them because it's not a a step that someone would take. I'd much prefer someone just said something nice in their social media generally about us. Yeah. 
Yeah, the whole social media thing is another completely different angle. Um, and again, not something that I follow particularly carefully. You know, I, I do not, yeah. at the end of a project, ask people to to tweet about it. Um, I'm just not a very heavy Twitter user or, you know, I use Facebook a lot for, for the WP Builds Facebook group, but that's, and a variety yeah. of other groups, but that's kind of where my where my involvement with Facebook goes. I'm sure that stuff's really powerful, but I just haven't really experimented with it. You know, asking clients to Twitter, just launched a website with the fabulous da-da-da. Um, wouldn't yes. it, would, it would be great if you uh, you checked it out and whilst you're at it, give them a call. You know, I don't know. Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but just natural conversation. The, the, I think the, the videos, it seems unnatural. It seems like, I don't know how I'd have that conversation. Would you mind recording something for me to put on the website about me? It seems I couldn't imagine myself asking someone to do this. So when I see it, and also, do you know what? there's another side, and this is, this is not the nice side of me. When I'm looking at these people, I start judging the people giving the testimonials <sighs> and whether I connect with them, Dang you know, it. whether they're my type of people. Well, yeah. I know. No, 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 I'm, I'm sure go that's th- very normal, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think it can, I don't know, work against. I'd rather put myself up there because that's who they're going to work with and just talk, uh, effectively give my own testimonial by explaining what we do and they can judge me and the person I am seems better than asking a client to do that for me. Mm. There are, of course, like solutions to all of this that are, well, things like, for example, LinkedIn, strikes me as like a really good solution to this kind of stuff, you know, getting endorsements and seeing what kind of work you've done, where you put together a, a, the best version of yourself on your LinkedIn profile or LinkedIn business page or whatever. But again, just through lack of lack of time or interest, I've just never really updated LinkedIn or made an effort to, to make the LinkedIn side of things look polished. But I suppose that might be a, a useful way. And I know for a fact that a lot of people gain a lot of work via LinkedIn. Yes, indeed. I remember many years back, I went on a course that was um, about Google Analytics and the person presenting that course wasn't that great, but they kept saying that, well, they don't really use it themselves because they just use, they get all their work from LinkedIn and their connections there. But this is some time back and I just, I haven't engaged with it, but I do wonder whether that's, you know, it's become phony. I don't, you know, I don't know if I trust recommendations through LinkedIn. Yeah, I suppose it's also just the fact that your profile, if you if you spend enough time on the platform and you massage your profile and make it really good, I suppose the idea is that eventually it works for you. You know, people start reaching out to you because of the content you've shared on there and the expertise that you've demonstrated on there. And, you know, so in our case, it would be talking about WordPress websites and in the end, it would be hoped that 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 would work in your favour. People would start communicating toward you, unsolicited toward you, um, about WordPress websites. But not having, I mean, I have a I have a LinkedIn page in much the same way that I've probably got a page on just about every single platform that's ever existed, but um, mm. just never yes. ever kind of got into LinkedIn or gained any immediate benefit from it when I started using it so quickly kind of fell off the wagon and never really went back. But I know that we'll probably get a bit of feedback about this because I'm sure that a lot of people use LinkedIn to enormous effect. Yeah, I bet they do. And I don't know how that translates so easily for, well, maybe people like us who are just trying to get a website job. I'm not, do you know, the entire package we want, don't we? Mm. We want to do everything for the client where I can imagine LinkedIn works well if you want to, Uh, link up with people who've got transferable skills so say you want somebody to do a certain thing uh, for you on a project that you're working on I can imagine that's how that works quite well so you say you know they're a developer I really could do with some filtering on this site that I can't make work Mm. you know that they might be the person to pull in but that's not the work I'm looking for so that's my how I imagine LinkedIn works well Mm. when you can just put your your it's basically your skills that you put there I just don't think 
clients go to LinkedIn looking for their web designer? No, no. I, I, again, no experience really of that. Um, I'd be interested to know what people think. I'm, I'm sure there's a place for it, and I'm sure people genuinely do go out and do cold outreach on LinkedIn and, and get work with each other. But, um, yeah, it's it's not worked for me in that regard. What about kind of like paper-based materials? So, you know, let's say, because we're in this period where we've, you know, we're moving up this funnel and we're at that point where, um, we're trying to to change it from emotional. I can't remember the words you used. What was it? Em- emotional is turning into. Yeah, to, this is where people are getting more logical. I logical, can't exactly what I said, it. but yeah. yeah. So emotional, yeah. emotions become logic, um, because there's many many times where I've been. So this is nothing to do with WordPress, nothing to do with websites, but where you've you've been in, engaging somebody. So an example might be, I don't know, you want to get some windows or something fitted in your house and you go and uh, the first thing they do is throw a load of paper at you you know glossy brochures of things that Mm -hmm. they've done in the past and look here's a here's a mansion with 658 of our windows in it and look here's a conservatory just like the one you want uh in a in the back garden (laughs) and and it is it is quite effective you know you you leave the building you take it with you um you know it's probably got a business card in it and so on and so forth i just because of the fact that i i like the paperless life and that's one of the things that drew me to working on the internet in the first place i think i don't i don't produce Mm. any sort of glossy paper-based materials that I can give to people. But it strikes me that in certain situations, that would be quite useful. I just point them at URLs and hope that they look at them. But that's very much when they're sat at the desk with the computer switched on. I know that a lot of people, unlike you and I, like to they like to go home and switch the computer mm. off. My computer's pretty much on all the time. But, you know, they're not going to be looking at your stuff from five o'clock onwards. Mm-hmm. So, but they might look at mm. your glossy brochure, which you've given them, and they can just leave on the coffee table. Hmm. So how how would that work? So when somebody shows some initial interest, you could just yeah. Send so them something. For, well, the 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 situation that I'm imagining is when I'm like gone to do a proposal, because at that point I'm still, you know, I'm hoping that they've liked what I've said, but I'm also well aware that I'm eminently forgettable. You know, as soon as I walk out the door, I don't know when the mm-hmm. next person's coming in, um, and they might do a pitch which is worse than mine in every respect but they came later and for some reason they just got along better and that's often enough to swing it right um Mm. but if i leave them some paper stuff it's just kind of it's like a nagging thing isn't it it's just sort of sitting there uh shouting a little bit like look here i am here i am you know use me pick me pick me i've never done it so i don't know the effectiveness on it but i know that in all sorts of industries that's absolutely standard stuff isn't it like when was the Mm. if you go into a bank and even mention that you're thinking about getting a bank account here mr wrigley have nine tons of papers to peruse (laughs) with all of the different options just take those and you know, we'll come back to us. It's just standard procedure, but I never do it. But I thought maybe it would be possibly effective. The, the The thing for me is, A, it's paper, and I'm trying to get away from that. And B, there's a gigantic upfront cost in producing that stuff. You know, it's not worth, probably not worth printing one or two, but it might be worth printing a hundred. And I'm, yeah. in all honesty, I'm not going to get through a hundred in, well, probably in the, the remainder of this century. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i think it's a really good idea at least it'll be quite different um right well we've got yeah. an actual we've got an but actual takeaway from this episode for once yay <laughs> <laughs> well there's one other thought that i had and i've been doing this a little bit uh, don't don't judge me too harshly on this but there are things now like um wp portfolio which is where you can show all the pre-made astra sites so i've been doing some landing pages for um, so different kind of niche markets to sort of send some things out. And I've been mixing those in with some templates that I've made as some examples of sites on this. So I wonder, you know, can we just, you know, does that work? To, because it's like a brochure, isn't it, of types of sites that you could have. And they're really beautifully designed, you know. Yep, I think you, that would totally work. I, I suppose it, it comes down to the level of commitment, doesn't it? You know, whether somebody's actually prepared to go off and spend the time. You see, again, just illustrating how different your working environment is from mine, I don't really have anything like that built. But should I have something like that built, that's exactly the sort of thing that I would take a client through when I was sitting next to them 
in their office. I'd say, mm-hmm. okay, so just to give you an illustration of what we can do, um, here's here's one that I prepared. You know, you, you must understand this is a, it's a, f- a fictional company. It doesn't really exist, but look, here it is. There's their there's their windows, and you can see all the filtering and the searching options. And and here's another one with a with a different way of laying it out entirely. You'll notice that we've got the logo slightly bigger there, and we, you know it's a slightly longer page with more te- more emphasis on the text or whatever it might be. That would be great in a one to one situation. But I, I'm I know. F- for my just just the way I behave is that I would probably look at one or two of those and then just close the browser down unless something was really compelling me to look at the next one and the next one and the next one. But I think face to face or on a Skype call or something that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. This is my thing. You know, I often thought that rather than just portfolios, which featured the, the basically the aesthetics of a design which you're showing, I thought maybe it should do more case studies. <clears throat> and there's clients of mine as well that do case studies on um, their sites as well about, you know, how they put together certain furniture and stuff. So it, they do that. But I often wonder how much, because when I've looked at people's case studies, I get bored just like you do. And, I, and why I haven't bothered taking making the effort to talk about some jobs that we've done and, and some of the benefits and some of the issues we have because i just think probably just somebody will look at whether there's some pretty sites and they'll just say mm, they'll just send me a quick email and just saying we've seen you how much is it going to cost for this yeah <laughs> that's yeah i i don't know if it's worth the time i don't know how much people will take the time on your website to to make those decisions mm. w- whether that's where they go for the proof or whether the proof needs to be there when it's that first contact and then you back up you know do you, do you know what, what you i've do. just i've just had what i think is quite a good idea whilst you've been talking what about ah. if on your portfolios these these templates that you've created what if you put something like logic hop or if so and send them a link which would which would make all of the places where the where the name of the company appeared appear so it looks like you've made it for their website. Do you know what I mean? So that instead of it just sort of saying, oh, I don't know, company X, it's actually got the name of their company and a few details that you could pre-populate elsewhere as well. There's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, that is a good idea. That You see, yeah. we're going to have to edit this out and go and make a plug in, David, at the end. No, I just thought that might be a nice way of, you know, if you send them those links and the first one that they click on, ooh, Goodness me, it's got my company name at the top. That's fascinating. That would definitely make me sit up. Yeah, well, it would, wouldn't it? But the problem is then you get kind of, well, that would work for maybe the kind of client that I'm trying to go for because I'm going for the sort of low budget, but it'd be quite tricky then to try and sell somebody a big redesign after them seeing that, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's true. Because I would just... Yeah, I think, I think I think the the already the shine of that idea has worn off. Uh, it's a rubbish idea. <laughs> Moving on, it's one for me. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you're the the only person that can benefit from that. But yeah, interesting. Do you ever um do you ever send like surveys out to your customers, asking them to sort of like rate you so that you can like gauge how well that you've done, and you know maybe even put some of that on a website? Like I don't know. Um, I've noticed I can't remember what they're called NP NPR or something like that where you give give people a rating mm. out of ten very quickly and hope to get some meaningful data and then they you you say why did you put seven out of ten and so on do you ever solicit that kind of stuff I know that we talked about testimonials earlier but do you ever ask for any other data back No I'm sure you know that the answer was going to yeah. be no on that yeah. you know it should be the thing that I do because I mean my background before my job before was all in statistics so you would think that would be the first thing i would think of but no (laughs) yeah it just just strikes me that might be quite a nice way to round a project off is to not only ask for the testimonial but ask for feedback both good and bad um yeah so that you can not just put that stuff on the website but you can also make decisions about well all right i think i'm quite good at this but this person thinks that the communication between us was lousy you know, the process was stretched out over far too many weeks or it was all too quick or whatever. Um, just strikes me that as you're, I, the, as you're closing things off, that would be a good time to get that information. 
Yeah, it would. And I, I think this is just the problem of sort of quantitative research. If you know, if you ask people to tick boxes, you often miss out the gaps. I, I think the idea is a good one. I, did we not mention this before, actually, about a kind of uh, an end process where you get feedback? But I think that's much better when it's more discursive, you know, when you can get qualitative information they actually sort of tell you about their experience and where you could improve i think mm. rather than trying to put people into boxes if I, i'm always getting this being invited to rate people on a survey but i always feel that it doesn't i don't know what they're going to get from it because i really can't express you know the the experience I, i'm just randomly clicking yeah. on boxes yeah yeah. I, know, yeah I know what you mean i'm very i, I, I suppose it just bec- it's because of the fact that we're Certainly in the UK, we're deluged with this kind of stuff, aren't we? You know, we have people phoning us up out of the blue asking asking us to buy things and wanting our opinion on things and people stopping us in the high street wanting us to fill, fill out a quick three-minute survey about your mobile phone package or whatever. And um, as a result, I'm, I'm pretty cynical about that kind of stuff. So if anybody asks me to fill out those kind of things, I basically never do. And that's mostly because it's a stranger. But I wondered if there was a benefit in it because you might have worked with this person or people quite closely and maybe even, dare I say, it built up some kind of friendship between them over the previous month or several weeks and might be that they're willing to do that because, you know, there's a connection there. I th- do you know what? I think that's another great uh, addition to this, actually. I think that is important to try and have that conversation. So I think it's just the way that it's done, you know, the friendship thing. If they can just tell you honestly what they thought of your survey, and if they say something great, you're going to learn something about you, or bad as well. Mm. You're going to learn how to change. But you could use, you say, can, you know, can I, the thing that you just said there, can I actually use that as a testimonial? You know, yeah, I think, uh, I think, I think that's really okay. handy. Yeah, I don't see why not. Most, um, most of the things that, that I put on the website, uh, th- this is the previous one that I was on about a few years ago. Um, the, the the actual name of the person went with it, you know, so it actually said first name and surname and that lent, lent some credibility. Obviously, I asked permission for it to go on the website and received it. But um, I think some people are reluctant with those kind of things as well. You know, they don't want their photo going on a, a, a website. They don't want to be associated with something that, you know, they've got no control over. So um having having an option to i don't know put mr t from from the a team no mr <laughs> mr p from such and such a company uh, allows it to happen but then of course the the flip side of that is that um i distrust it even more cuz now it's not a real person it's just mr mr p um but yeah i, I <laughs> yeah, think exactly. definitely ask for that stuff I, you know and again there's we're not trying to express that we're doing any of this stuff because I don't do any of that stuff, but I'm, I will try harder. Yeah, I'm going to think a lot more about that. And I think if it's the problem is if somebody asks me to rate their service through some, you know, system, some email when I go and click on something and I have to give them a star rating on each of these different sections, there's something that just sort of feels annoying, needy about it. And I don't get to communicate. And I think if we're offering a personal service, there must be a point somewhere and we should maybe build it into our process where we do have a just a genuine a genuine chat with them as real people about our service and explain why we want to know we want to know because we want to be able to tell other people about the good things and we want to be able to correct the things that we we could improve on mm. and, and make it more more human you know yeah yeah i do i'll tell you what though we've missed we're really deeply into this topic now but we've missed probably the one that clearly resonates the most with both of us which is um, gaining gaining trust by producing content. So in your case, you've got a, a, a litany of videos that you've made about all sorts of WordPress related things, and they all go up on YouTube. And 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 that's you, you. I think it's fair to say you think that that has worked and hopefully will work for you in the future, just by putting content in the area in which you're claiming to have some expertise and hoping that you know, in some way that you have no control over, people will see that content and then come to you and hopefully wish to uh, subscribe to your mm. your service. Yeah, definitely. Well, we both got this, haven't we? I, yeah. It's not working in my favor so much at the moment because when I've been doing videos, it's been about what I've just learned to do. And um, mm. so uh, when I'm getting 
people to talk to me, usually it's because they, they've got stuck, they're doing their site themselves and they got stuck and they think I might know more and they're wrong. <laughs> I don't know more. <laughs> and, uh, you, you know, and it's lovely. And I think that's the same because if you're, if you're putting out content, people do believe that you've got some kind of expertise. And uh, even if you just say, you know, as we often do, we're just regular people and learning. But, uh, but it's not getting the people that I really could ideally do with <laughs> It's not attracting the kind of people that I want to do a full project with and I need to, but I think I can change my content to meet those people more and I'm going to do that. Yeah, I was going to say that seems like um, uh, just a, a, a product of having a different kind of content. If you were to produce different material and, you know, uh, have the correct SEO keywords in there, you could, you mm. know, quite easily produce content about your business and and that I'm sure that would work really well. In my case, because... Because I produce content about WordPress, um, yeah. it, the the only the only benefit to my business for that is one of like a like a big testimonial. Really, it's one where I can you know a prospective client comes to me and I can sort of say, yeah, I really really am interested in WordPress and I can prove it. You know, I'm not I'm not doing this uh, for the last couple of weeks and I can show them the uh, the you know the wp builds website and all of the content mm. that we produce and obviously it doesn't speak to my competence but it does speak to my interest and the fact that i've been doing it for a while so from that point of view it it kind of lends it massages it a bit and it lends a bit of kudos and um what's the word um, sincerity mm. um, authenticity something like that but it doesn't it doesn't obviously make me any better or it doesn't prove that I can do a particular thing but it but it does demonstrate that I've I've got skin in the game and I'm I'm deeply into WordPress yeah, I think it's helped indirectly. Um, in fact, I just got a job from someone who I've kind of seen around in the communities for some time. But I'm sure it probably helped the fact that they knew I did these videos and they knew I did this WP bills because they knew obviously I was committed to what we do. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I, it definitely has helped. And um you know, WP Builds helps me because, I mean, even though you did the interview with Matt Mullenweg, a lot of people know what WordPress is. A lot of people know who he, he is. And it's wonderful, the fact that most people seem to think I did the interview with him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is uh, that is amazing. It's just about, uh, uh, we should probably explain. I did an interview with Matt Mullenweg about, oh, just over a year ago. And the amount of times that people... Um, congratulated David on his wonderful interview with Matt Mullenweg. <laughs> it was it was hysterical, really, wasn't it? It happened quite a few times. Um, but yeah. yeah, kudos. I, I suppose the only thing about producing um, content is that it's a bit of an ongoing battle. Uh, that is to say, it, it you know we're always told you have to constantly be creating new content, and if you're in it for SEO purposes, I'm sure that's true. You, you know, if you want to rise to the top on a particular keyword, you'll mm. have to keep producing that content. But if you if you just want to produce content as a way of illustrating your competence, then you don't. You, you could produce it on whatever time scale you've got available to you. You know, one piece, one short piece a month, or a large piece every couple of months, whatever. Um, if you're simply just trying to use it as a okay, if you've got any doubts, just go and have a look at I don't know this this series of blog posts or this YouTube channel which shows you um, you know ten. 10 different ways that you can achieve a certain thing in WordPress, then that's fine. But it, but it is more cumbersome than getting a printer to produce um, like some leaflets for you or writing a quick email, hoping to get some testimonials back. It, it definitely takes more work. Um, but I, you know, I'm, mm. I, I think it's, I think it's been worth it from my point of view. Yeah. The, the danger is it just takes over, doesn't it? You need quite a bit of time to produce content. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's something, something you need to get. I know as soon as I have a, a slight break from doing something, then I, 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 it's almost like I have to learn again. I have to sort of really push myself to start up again with yeah. content. So it needs to be something, as all of these things, I think th th this book we're talking about is all about trying to build in things which are systematic so you don't lose these people along the way. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of pick the thing that's going to work for you. But can I just mention one thing else that she mentions, and I don't, I don't do this, but um, do, do you identify any of the people who might be your top referrers, people who probably will talk about you the most and do anything for them um in a word no 
but I can see the intelligence <laughs> of that and why I would. I mean, I, I think I probably anecdotally know. Um, the mm-hmm. the only like I've mentioned before, the only thing that I've done in this regard is um, is I ask people how they came to me, and if they mention somebody's name, I and I know them, I and they're a previous customer, I send them a bottle of wine or take them a bottle of wine round or whatever. But no, I don't. I don't kind of figure out. Oh, look, John Smith. He's been uh, he's been pretty good referring me. I'm going to go and have a chat with John and see if we can step this up a gear. Don't do anything like that. No. Yeah, and you know, something that just crossed my mind on that. I, I've mm. never done this. Mm. It may be a bit cheesy, but I don't. On clients' own social networks, I don't tend to engage in conversations on their networks. And if I did, um, you know, they, they might just be inclined to mention oh, I'm the person who does their website, which would then reach other people who are on their network. I've never done that. No, Perhaps I should. I suppose if you've got like some sort of affiliate system, you know, especially if you're selling mm. like a product or whatever it might be, you, you can look at those metrics and it would be fairly easy to see who's referring you the most actually converting business or just giving you the most referrals. I suppose that'd be fairly easy to do. And then you could reward um, in kind, you know, give them a d- bigger percentage or whatever it might be. But no, no, I, I don't. I don't. Mm. We've gone on, David. We're now at quite a lot of minutes. So I'm thinking unless <laughs> unless there's a brand new thing that you want to introduce, we should probably knock it on the head. I agree with you. Yep, time to go. Yep, all right. Have a nice week. We'll see you soon. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that episode. It's certainly interesting talking these things over. Many, many ways to leak clients. And of course, not having the credentials, the proof that you are in fact capable of delivering what it is that you say you're going to deliver could be crucial. As we said in the episode and I said in the show notes, David and I both feel this is an area that we lack in. Maybe the whole testimonial portfolio thing is getting a bit tired. Maybe you've got a perfect solution. You've got a perfect way of proving that you are in fact legit. If so, please add some comments to the wpbuilds.com website or go to wpbuilds.com forward slash Facebook. Join the Facebook group and you could maybe comment over there instead. I hope that you enjoyed the episode anyway. The WP Builds podcast was brought to you today by WP and Up. One in four of us will be directly affected by mental health related illness. WP and Up supports and promotes positive mental health within the WordPress community. This is achieved through mentorship, events, training, and counseling. Please help enable WP and Up by visiting wpandup.org forward slash give. Okay, we'll be back this time next week for another podcast episode but do remember we also on a monday have a wordpress weekly news i release a 25 30 minute audio version of the summation of the wordpress news for the previous week and then at 2 p.m uk time we do a live version with two or three notable wordpressers you can find that at wpbuilds.com forward slash live that's at 2 p.m uk time so plenty of stuff coming from wp builds this week and i hope to interact with you in some way during this week Anyway, I'm going to fade in some awful cheesy music and say bye-bye for now.